We are closing in, partner, on the official start to the 2024 NFL League year. It is 12 or 04 p.m. Eastern time. Glad you're with us for a Wednesday live stream. I'm Bobby Trossett, as always, joined by Sarah Ellison. And a lot to get to just within the last couple minutes, starting with a reworked contract structure, restructure for Ronnie Stanley, our Darius Washington news, Jadavian Clowney, uh, Tyus Bowser. Like, there, there's a lot to get to. Plenty of blowback since Patrick Queen's news came down the timeline, heading to a bitter rival in Pittsburgh, and a ton of national reaction to Derrick Henry becoming a Raven. Did I miss anything? Because uh, all that more is on deck. There's quick hits. There's quick hits beyond that. So there's a lot of news, just like the last previous two days. So let's get with it. Yeah, let's begin with with Ronnie Stanley, and then we'll be we'll get to Tyus Bowser and everything that's come out within the last hour. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler reporting that the Ravens and former All-Pro left tackle Ronnie Stanley have agreed to a reworked deal. That's according to his sources. He was due $15 million, as we know, which was the second highest cap hit uh, for the 2024 season behind Lamar Jackson. He now plays on less in base pay, but has the upside potential to reach or surpass that number. The $26.2 million cap hit will reduce. So still waiting for some finer details, yep. as is Brian McFarland from a, a salary cap standpoint, so he can kind of calculate what this actually means for the Ravens, but certainly a good step in the right direction from, from a team-building standpoint. Anybody that's been watching this show the last couple of weeks knows that this is exactly what I've been pushing for. Um, and and I so we, we said it again yesterday, and I saw some comments saying that I was tripping, that there was no way that Ronnie was going to agree to a pay cut. Uh, but that's exactly what happened, and it's a great move by Eric DaCosta. The the alternative of cutting him either fully this year, which just wasn't an option, or doing a post you want June one, it was going to damage, do significant ja damage to the salary cap both this year and next year. Um, I've seen a lot of people say, you know, this is good for Ronnie Stanley's being a team player. I, I get that to a certain extent, but this is this. When, I, when we had this conversation, you said, why would Ronnie Stanley do this? He's already under contract. He could just push it, right? And say, no, this is my this is my contract. This is what you agreed to. There was no stipulation that if I would get you know injured that I would have to take a pay cut. And I said back, it's more about leverage. It's about leverage. And you're coming off of several seasons where you have list, missed a ton of games. And so you come to him. We still don't know what the number is. We know that he was due $15 million in base salary. Base salary. That's very different from his cap hit. Okay. But we do. So his base salary is uh, $15 million, cap hit 26.2. So this, and, and I can tell this, the language here was trying to be soft on Ron, Ronnie, which I appreciate. It yeah. sounds like, sounds like um, um, agent kind of language because they're using the word reworked. This is not the same as a restructure. A restructure is where you play with that bonus money, the, the signing, the, 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 yeah, you can convert base salary into bonus money and then you spread that over the years. For the player, that's a win win. That's like, I'm still, I still have the same contract, but I'm getting more money up front. And you like the money up front because if you get cut, then you lose money. This is not a reworked contract. This is them saying, or this is not a restructured contract. This is them saying, that the base salary is going down. That means a pay cut. Okay, so what that means in the cap, who knows? But I've been pushing a pay cut plus on top of it, which could happen by four. We'll find out if I'm right or wrong. On top of that, if you were to cut Morgan Moses, you could get the same cap savings if you had just cut post-June 1, Ron Stan Ronnie Stanley anyway. Now, there also says there's so much upside that he could surpass his current number. That's fine with me. Like, if you surpass it with incentives, that's a win for everybody. That means that you were on the field all 17 games, probably, and you protected Lamar Jackson. To me, you want a bonus off of that? Fine. So everybody wins if he ends up surpassing it, and then that number, that those incentives would hit next year's cap. Okay, so this is a win for Eric DaCosta. I'm happy to see it, and I wish Ronnie Stanley the best. Let's get him healthy, all of that. And at the same time, while this is all going on, let's look into the depth of the draft because not all eggs can be in this basket. Let's get let's get the future rolling with the draft class. 
Yeah, they're going to have a chance to do that. And they may not have to necessarily do that right off the top at 30th in the first round. You know, that's that's got depth, like you said. And we're going to start to really dig our teeth into who a couple of those candidates could be. The future potential replacement of Ronnie. Perhaps some guard help if they have that versatility coming up in the next few weeks as we get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft, which is Thursday, April 25th. It begins at least Thursday, April 25th. Not long after that. Jeff Zerebeck working the phones and his sources found out some news here related to Tyus Bowser. Certainly doesn't come as a surprise, but the Ravens are releasing their veteran outside linebacker. It's going to create about five and a half million dollars of cap space. We know that he did not play in 2023 and what continues to be a mystery, but the overall headache, even though he as a person, let me be clear, is far from a headache. He's a great guy, uh, somebody who, man, it was very impactful for the Ravens prior to all of this. Yeah. Uh, did not play in 2023 because of the knee injury. There was a lot of mixed messaging. There continues to be a lot of confusion surrounding that injury and what led to it. And all of a sudden, over the last two years, he's played in just nine games. So this was something that needed to happen. The Ravens are certainly looking in, in all likelihood going to be moving forward after Tyson. I know you and I, I just saw your tweet and I certainly echo it. You know, you wish the player the best and you hope that he lands yeah. on his feet. Uh, but for the Ravens, the, the only step really was was moving forward. This was an inevitable move for sure. And so that's why there's really no need to like, you know, kick him while he's down, rub salt in the wound. You know he wishes he was a part of that run last year. To, to watch Kyle Vanoy come in and play that Sam linebacker role and succeed and just put up career numbers. You know that was painful for him, and he can't figure out what's going on with his knee. He recently revealed to Aaron Wilson, former Ravens reporter, now he's down in Houston, he revealed that he ended up having to have a scope and drain some liquid out of his knee. And so, uh, you know, he want, I'm sure he wanted to be a part of that. He couldn't be, and now on top of it, he's been cut. So no reason tough. to like, it's tough. And he's And he's one of the nicest dudes. He's just so nice. So honestly, Sarah, don't you think I, in that in that clip? Sorry to interject that that clip that we shared earlier in the week from Aaron. Don't you kind of the way that he answered, like, yeah. "Oh, we got to see what's up with Eric," even though he was under contract. He kind of knew this was coming. I'd have yeah, to think. he knew, he knew. But I I really hope he gets healthy, and I really want to see him land on his feet. Like it's yeah. it's it, this is tough, but it's it's the right move for the Ravens to make. Yeah, absolutely. And not that this next thing is is as big as the two topics that we've started this out with but just because from a chronological standpoint Jeff was just all over this a second ago before we came on uh, as he refers to it it's housekeeping but the Ravens are bringing back our Darius Washington at defensive back uh, who's their lone exclusive rights free agent he's a former undrafted rookie played in two games started one before sustaining that that chest injury a year ago but prior to that this guy's shown some game like this dude's been a, a, a valuable piece to their puzzle from a depth perspective. And and I, I for one, am excited to, to see that he's going to be back because I don't think we've seen his ceiling yet. We've seen flashes of it. And I'm not saying he's going to be like an integral part of their defense, but I think he, he could be an important piece. Yeah, if he were to stay healthy, he's another guy because he, he's been uh, – not highly paid. He people haven't come down as hard of him with with injuries, which is good. I don't know that you need to come down hard at anybody with injuries, but um, he has been more injury prone. But if he were to stay healthy, this is important, Bobby, because he can obviously play safety. And the Ravens just lost Stone, and they're looking for more depth at safety. He can also play um, that inside nickel position at corner. And yeah. we still don't know what's going to happen with uh, Arthur Millett. Uh, yeah. You can obviously move um, Hamilton down into that position too. You can move uh, Marlon Humphrey into that position. And you also got Ardarius Washington who can play in that position and also back up at safety. So this is going to be an under the radar move. And like you said, it's housekeeping, but it, it's important, especially if you were able to stay healthy. Keep moving along here with plenty more to discuss. And before we do, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Manta Sleep, as you heard there at the top. And this is a true 100% blackout for a deeper sleep. C-shaped eye cups for unbeatable side sleep comfort is what it provides you. Zero pressure on your eyelids or lashes. You've got advanced materials and ventilation for unmatched breathability. And it's what Sarah and I both trust and Sarah's kids trust for a good deep <laughs> sleep. So uh, click on the link that we have included in the show notes below if you are interested. And at checkout, 
if you use our discount code VAULT10. That is V-A-U-L-T-1-0. You'll get 10% off your next purchase. Again, you do not need blackout curtains anymore if you have this. It, it suffices. And whether you want a nice nap, whether you want it on the plane or train or wherever you're traveling to or just for a, a deep sleep at night on a nightly basis, uh, the Mantis Sleep Mask and all the different options that they have uh, on their website are a really good fit. So thanks to Mantis Sleep. Go check them out for more if you're interested in the comment section below. So what do you have here? Well, with- I just wanted to remind everybody because today is the reason why we're hearing about Tyus Bowser today and we're hearing about the the pay cut to, to Ronnie Stanley is 4 p.m. is when the Ravens need to be kept compliant. And after that uh, deal with uh, Derrick Henry and with the official start to free agency a few hours away, they have to get under the cap. So I just want to remind people, here are the other options to create room. So we see already that it was, yes, $5.5 million for Ty Spouser. Um, and then uh, Ronnie Stanley, we see that if they had done a post June one, it would have saved uh, fifteen million there. So, uh, but that fifteen million, we'll see how low he comes down from twenty six. It'd be nice if they get four or five million. Yeah, it might be closer to three. We'll see yeah. somewhere in that three to five million range. But the one I expect is Morgan Moses, which would be another five point five million. So, uh, Patrick Ricard, I don't see him being cut. I mean, he we'll get to what he was saying to Patrick Queen the other day. So. <laughs> I know he doesn't think so based off of the way he was tweeting yesterday. Uh, but there's other some restructures they can do. Obviously, there's there's Mark Andrews, there's Lamar Jackson, there's plenty of others. So we'll see what other moves they they get going on between. There might be some more coming on while we're live. But I just wanted to pull that up as a reminder that 4 p.m. That's the deadline to to make these moves. For what it's worth, I've heard some from from at least one person in Pat Ricard's camp who referred to the situation as them being hopeful that he will be back. And then on top of that, for Pat to tweet what he did, which we'll get to later on, uh, seems like the both parties are pretty confident. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Pat's back. I think You'd he's a be great surprised. fit. Let's put it that way. Man, he's a great yeah. fit for Baltimore. He really just is. He's a glue guy. And this guy was too last year. Mike Garofolo of NFL Network has the latest on Jadavian Clowney, who's one of the unrestricted free agents set to hit the market later today when the new league year begins at 4 p.m. Eastern. And he is doing his due diligence, I guess you can say. He uh, he and the Panthers are meeting. They're going to host the three-time Pro Bowler. And he is a Rock Hill, South Carolina native, so potentially a little homecoming here. But he's got interest from a few teams, which we've heard before, including the Ravens, which – Hopefully they're still in the running here, uh, but he's ex- according to Mike. First and foremost, he's exploring a return home first. Carolina has been spending. We know Jadavian has play, uh, played last year uh, as if he is deserving of such spending. He's earned that kind of spending, and it's a matter of w- what's the biggest value to him or priority to him at this point in his career. You know, because I think there's going to be some teams out there, Sarah, that that might put Baltimore in a position where they can't quite match or exceed offers that come in for based on how he played last year. Yeah. So listen, if the money were equal and you had a choice between Carolina, whose GM just seems to be like blowing it every which way. Um, (laughs) New regime though, new (laughs) regime, new era. Got Dave, Dave Canales from, from Tampa, originally from Seattle. One of the games, great great minds, but, but yeah, I mean, there's still, you get, yeah, the well, they're, they're still a couple years away, right? I like, mean, the way they turned down the Brian Burns trade offer from last year, which I believe was a couple firsts. And then, I mean, they got way less this time around. Uh, but you know, like you said, there were, there was a regime change. And when there is a regime t- change, you still just don't know about the stability. It's like, okay, you got rid of what was clearly a problem, but is this, is this the correct solution? So if the money were equal, why wouldn't he change the Ravens? And clearly from this report, the Ravens are interested. That being said, I wouldn't hate Clowney because he played at such a discount last year and he was a game short from the Super Bowl. He might be like, do I want to chase the Super Bowl again? Cause it's one out of 32 teams or should I go get paid? Because I played at quite a discount last year. I wouldn't hate him doing that. Now, that being said, with these cap cuts about to happen, not just with the Ravens, but league wide, that could change the outside linebacker market and uh, really all, all positions could change it. So for example, 
Brentley Weissman, who uh, is a former NFL, NFL scout with the Chargers, okay? okay, and and with other teams, he tweeted, you know, 39 minutes ago. He said, "Fully expect both Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa to no longer be Chargers by the end of the day today." Okay. So you know he goes into a little bit more detail here, but that's going to change things. It's going to be like, oh, if there's a Joey Bosa out there on the outside linebacker market, then somebody that has money might say, well, hold up, I'll go spend it over there. And then it could change whatever is happening with Clowney. So, but uh, you, like, it does not surprise me whatsoever that Clowney has more than one team that is interested because of the way he just fell. But let's see, let's, before we get all like, oh, we have to have this guy back, that guy back. Let's see who else is going to be out there because they any cap casualties does not go against the comp pick. So, I mean, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa out there, that's going to change things. <laughs> Word of Josh probably speaking for the entire fan base. I support Clowney if he can get more money, just not the Steelers. Yeah. Not after this week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to PQ in just a bit, I promise. We've got plenty of PQ content, but first, Let's just kind of see and, and remind you what's going on here. Day two had just as much. Well, actually, day one was pretty quiet in terms of what the Ravens well, did they, from a spending standpoint. But it wasn't quite in terms of who they lost, right? Right, right. Yeah. But but the decisions they made uh, that was in their control, I guess, was well, day two was was uh, night and day. So lost Patrick Queen to Pittsburgh, gained Derrick Henry. There's been a lot of fun yeah. tandem headline creation between the queen and the king there and that those analogies they obviously brought in so so Derek came in on on a two-year 16 million dollar deal the incentives are up to to 20 and nine is guaranteed in year one they have lost Patrick Queen like we mentioned Delshawn Phillips has gone to Houston PQ obviously to Pittsburgh and Tyler Ott this happened after we were Remember, Tyler Ott kind of filled a, a, a void for them when Nick Moore went down with that injury at yep. long snapper last year. And so Tyler Ott signs a, a, a great deal for a long snapper in Washington. He's joined the Commanders three years, $4.4 million. He's one of those guys that um, you, know, you never really heard his name, and that, that that's that's a good thing. And he he kind of stabilized that unit with, with Justin and, uh, and Jordan there at, at long snapper. So that's what's happened to this point so far. Right. And so that kind of finally brings us to the big one of yesterday. This one happened um, right after, I mean, right after we finished our live stream, Adam Schefter had reported it's not news by at this point, but he was signing a three year, $41 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bobby, I wish that that money was higher f for a few reasons. One, I wanted to see PQ get paid yeah. Two, I wanted the Ravens to have a third round draft pick compensatory mm -hmm. draft pick out of him. And it looks like it'll be closer to a fourth now. And then the last thing is like, if he was going to sign with the Steelers, I wanted it to like put a bigger dent in their, <laughs> in their salary cap. So I do wish that was a, a bigger deal. So we haven't had like a Geno stone kind of post where Geno stone was like going to the Bengals, And he's like, Hey, appreciate all the time with y'all and this and that. The only like, it's more back and forth in PQ. And then this one that he kind of put out after the news got out, he posted a, a meme, the gif or gif from the Joker saying, and here we go. Like, as oh, he's if he's like dropping a yeah. bomb on, on, and it is a bomb when you see a first round draft pick from the Ravens go over to the, the, the biggest and, and most heated and hated rival in the Steelers. Oh yeah, I think he's embracing this this villain role at least yeah. within the, within the first twenty four hours. Definitely having some fun on social media. Um, you know, look, this is something that obviously is going to be polarizing. It's polarizing right now, and it'll be polarizing months from now when the season begins for this fan base. Both Gino and Patrick. We know Gino is Cincinnati bound. Patrick is Pittsburgh bound. They've changed their profile pictures. Things are moving in that direction. Photoshop is on high levels right now with Gino looking like, like he does in a Bengals Jersey and PQ, which is going to get, it's going to have to take some, some getting used to here with PQ and the Steelers Jersey. But I know that can be hard to stomach for some of you, but here's how some of his teammates in PQ's case, reacted to uh to, to the move isaiah likely uh, says that you know love brother for real for real you deserve it i wish nothing 
but 0-17 in your future seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah wasn't done there either. He, he, he kind of had the same format here for the audio-only audience. He's, these are Instagram story reposts of the news for PQ and Gino. And at the top of it, above the photo, he gives love. Below it, he goes after him. Uh, <laughs> congrats, family. You earned it to Gino. Officially deleted off the PSN. What's PSN? I, I don't know. C uh, comments people are going to have to tell us. I don't oh, know. Maybe it's p personal. Uh, hit, somebody hit us with, with PSN. We're, we're probably completely Oops. clueless right now. But yeah, Marlon Humphrey checking in on this. The, the combination of this high altitude atmosphere where, I'm right in. Now. I don't know where he is. Do you? Is he in Colorado? Uh, I have no Network. idea. That's one of the first place I think of with high altitude. But go ahead. Okay, these dudes are these dudes are um, gamers together then. PlayStation Network. Got you. Thank you, everybody. Sarah and I have never been gamers, I don't think. Well, I was as a little kid, but in my maybe adult like, years with four kids, I don't, I don't think it would look a little bit weird. Let's see. Maybe the last time I was in it was like GameCube as a young, yeah. young, young boy. I'll tell you what, though, man. I was, I was legit serious about Madden back in the day, me and my brothers. Like, Madden, yeah. Madden, yeah. big time. Play a little Mortal, Mortal Kombat, obviously Mario Kart back in the day. But Madden, <laughs> Madden and um, Double Dribble. That was old school, old school. We were serious about that. Oof. Okay, gotcha. sorry, go ahead. Off, Since then. Off the track yeah. there. <laughs> this is, they want to know what my PSN is. I don't have, I don't have one. You don't have one either. I mean. Well, what was yours? Were you like a PSN 1? No I think clue. I got out. I got I up to know. PSN 2, I think. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like the PlayStation, well, like the, not PSN, oh, but PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2, the versions of when you had like oh, the hardware. Yeah. Now it's just like all online, obviously. Yeah, but it means yeah. nothing to me. <laughs> it's been so long. It's like I know what you're talking about, but it's been it's been so long. Yeah, I was about to give out my social security number, Bryce. Look out. Um, so Marlon, wherever he is, the, the combination of the high altitude atmosphere and what PQ just did had his chest hurting. Kyle Hamilton continues to be elite from obviously on the football field, but with his meme use as well. He said, uh, quote, Dad. Didn't you play with Patrick Queen in Baltimore? And then he's got a meme of of, of Vince McMahon getting all teary eyed and kind of like you know cutting Cut off the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, there there's been a widespread reaction on this. Pat Pat Ricard and Tori Smith weighing in as well uh, with a gif of a guy just like with his hands over his mouth. Imagine being a oh, linebacker man. with Pat Ricard and Derrick Henry writing wanting right at your face. I mean that that's a choice, PQ. That is a choice. <laughs> The Lamar Jackson keeping up with his jokes uh, based off of the Tiki Barber and Saquon Barkley beef going on over there in New York. After he said, you're dead to me, to Geno Stone the previous day, he comes back with PQ. Patrick Queen, he tags him, you're dead to us, Queen. Good luck. You're dead to me. <laughs> oh. And then this, this is one, great. This, this, this one's wins probably it my all. favorite. Yeah, this is my favorite. Patrick Ricard tweets, uh, not sure which news I'm most excited about blocking for King Henry every game or getting to pancake Patrick queen twice a year. And then Patrick queen quote retweets that and says, and with the laughing emoji, this is all in jokes, by the way, uh, gotta get your hands on me first, big boy. I added the first, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be, this just brings me back to this one. I probably put it in the wrong order, but it brings me back to this, like this rivalry. Just it, took, uh, you know what? It's it's been a little bit dim in recent years, a little bit dimmer. Um, but uh, to me, it took another step up. Patrick Queen just took this rivalry to another step. Check this out. The NFL Network puts out graphics, you know, to kind of like put these core core people together with their team. And on the left, you've got the Steelers, and now you've got Patrick Queen back there with. Uh, I've got Bosa on my mind. That's T.J. Watt. Fitzgerald, uh, and, uh, oh, Minka, 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 Minka or, yeah, Minka Fitzpatrick yeah. and, yeah. um, Joey Porter, Porter Jr. Yeah. Okay. On one side going against this offense with the Ravens. Now with I saw the Patrick hitting... Peterson's not, not going to be back. I, I saw Patrick Peterson. So they're going with youth Okay, uh, at that position with Joey Porter. So I, I saw that recently, but, uh, okay. but you, you might be onto something here. Is this rivalry going to be renewed this year? Oh man. It's, it, I mean, listen, we can't, 
AFC North is going to be off the hook. Like I made a joke yesterday that everybody's signing in the AFC, but really everybody's signing in the AFC North. Like the Bengals are going to be back. Joe Burrow's going to be back. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns are going to be back. And, and it's just going to be hard hitting again with the Steelers. And they could be back with um, Russell Wilson, who, by the way, tweeted yesterday, queen, you know, like excited that oh, yeah. he's going to be there joining him over there. And so yeah. anyway, but, but so all of AFC North is just going to be, I mean, last year was already the, the fact that the Ravens won the division last year with how tough it is. And then it's going to be even tougher if all the quarterbacks stay healthy and look at this hard hitting. I, I cannot wait for King Henry to go up the middle and Patrick Queen to be there. And I need that collision, Bobby. I need that collision in my life. This is going to be must-see TV. Derrick Henry, they've got this in this uh, graphic. Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers, Lamar Jackson. That's the core. Don't forget about Keaton Mitchell coming back. Isaiah Likely. I mean, this is going to be must-watch TV. Yeah, this is exactly what the division needs. I, th I think this division is, yet again, going to be one of the most compelling, if not the most compelling, and the most competitive division in all of football. And, hey, some some folks are uh, calling my attention to your frozen screen. Do you want to come in and out, and I'll continue oh, the show? am I frozen? All right, let's do that. Cool. I'll be right back. Yeah, let's keep this moving, though. I mean, honestly, th this rivalry very well might be renewed this upcoming season. Like, for me and my money, it's been Cincinnati and Baltimore over the last several years. Maybe it's going to be both. Like, this is a legit division. Good luck pre predicting how it all goes out. You're going to have Russ with a chip on his shoulder and the revamped, kind of renewed Pittsburgh Steelers. I assume that he's going to be your starter over Kenny Pickett. You're going to have Deshaun Watson coming back from injury with that new supporting cast with playmaking ability all around him in Cleveland. Right, you're going to have Joe Burrow coming back from injury in Cincinnati. You know that they have a bunch of playmaking ability, and then you got Baltimore. Like, this is a no joke division. You got to make it through. You got to earn your right to win this division, and that's going to be something. Like, could all four teams? How many teams are going to be in the AFC playoff picture? You get the sense that all four have a chance. It's going to be insane, insane to think about. Something Sarah tweeted earlier on kind of got me thinking, and I just put out a personal video about this a, a little while ago. Did Patrick Queen have an ulterior motive? Did he have an ulterior motive in signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers? What I mean by that is I'm not questioning his character. I'm not questioning his integrity. I'm not questioning who he is as a man. I think he matured and became a Baltimore Raven, a Baltimore Raven inside linebacker one that's all pro, pro bowl caliber, and somebody who was deserving of a payday. We all knew that wasn't going to happen in Baltimore. But the reason why I tweeted something to Joe Person, who covers the Carolina Panthers earlier this week, uh, earlier today actually, again live right now on, on Wednesday, March 13th, kind of inquiring about where he, where the ballpark offers from Carolina were. He was, he, they were believed to be in the running. Uh, for Patrick Queen. And it just had me wondering, like, was that offer, were those numbers anywhere within the ballpark of what Pittsburgh ended up signing him for? Because if they were, I'd really be wondering if these things on the screen impacted his decision to go to a bitter rival, to see Baltimore twice a year for the foreseeable future, to be in division. And we have a trade right now. This is happening live. We're going to revisit this in just a second. Okay, the Ravens are sending Morgan Moses to the New York Jets as part of a pick swap. The Jets are going to receive Morgan in a fourth-round pick. They're number uh, 134th overall next month. And the Ravens receive a fourth-round pick in exchange, 112. 112th and a sixth rounder, 218 overall. So all of a sudden, the Ravens are making waves right now ahead of the new league year. Morgan Moses is being shipped to New York. He's joining the Jets, and it's a pick swap. 
So Moses in a fourth rounder. This year's 134th overall is going to New York. And the Ravens, in exchange, are receiving a fourth round pick and a sixth round pick. Those two things. Those two things are coming to Baltimore. So they pad their picks. They're going to be looking at who their next potential right tackle is. Perhaps that's Patrick McCary to start. Perhaps that is somebody in the draft. Maybe this really starts to kind of shift their gears to finding that tackle early in the draft, perhaps at 30 overall, perhaps in the second round. But again, after 4 p.m. Eastern today, in, in a little over three hours from now, that will become official. That will become official. And remember, this is actually a reuniting for Morgan Moses, who's going to be going back to New York where he once was. You missed a lot. What just happened? You missed a lot. You know, <laughs> you, know you didn't miss anything besides, you know, a, a, a pre-New League year trade. Who do we trade? Morgan Moses is heading to New York. The Ravens yeah. are getting – it's a pick swap. He's joining the Jets and a fourth rounder. They're sending Moses in a fourth rounder. And the Ravens are getting a fourth round pick in exchange, number 112 overall, that they sent the 134th over to New York. And a sixth rounder, they're also going to get 218 overall. So Morgan Moses is gone. Perhaps Daniel Falele or Patrick McCary are your is your starting right tackle. But now, now this whole conversation about the tackle depth is going to become front and center at the draft. When will that become a priority for the Ravens? Will it will it be a strong enough to compete with the McCarries and the Faleles? And now it looks like there will definitely be a new right tackle not named Morgan Moses in 2024. Let EDC cook. Because just a few minutes ago, Bobby, I was saying that Cook's that, that Morgan Moses is going to be a cap casualty. Oh, Eric DeCosta's like, well, yes, but no, Sarah. Okay. He's we're going to, we're going to recoup that 5.5 million, but I'm going to get, let's see. So they're going and a fourth round. So they're going to move up in the fourth round, moving up and adding a pick. Round pick. All right. You know, now giving like, up, you know, giving up one, giving up that fourth rounder, but they're moving up. So they're, but that's the, so they already had two fourth round picks because of the, because of the comp pick yep. for, um, who do we powers right Ravens ben got, powers a year so they're ago. at the they're at the back of the fourth round because of that and they were already towards the back of the of the fourth round because of where they finished in the playoffs so now they move up geez more than 20 spots and if we're talking about depth at wide receiver and an offensive line you can go get yourself a you know a guard in the fourth round that's what powers was sure Right. And so, and then a six round pick. So these aren't like, Ooh, you know, massive, like second rounder or first rounder, but these are the little things that EDC does. He just, he just picked up five and a half million by, by trading him and not just cutting him, but then moved up 22 spots in the fourth round and picked up an extra six rounder in a draft that everybody's saying there's a ton of depth. So, you know, these are the small moves that make a big difference in the end. And, oh, by the way, he got Ronnie Stanley to do a pay cut. Let EDC cook. Yeah, it's been a productive week. So here you are. If you're just joining us with over 3,200 right now concurrently watching this stream, we're glad you're here. Sarah Ellison, Bobby Trossett, live on YouTube, live on Twitter. We have a trade and a reunion. The Ravens are sending starting right tackle Morgan Moses to the New York Jets. As part of a pick swap, that's according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. The Jets are going to receive Morgan and a fourth-round pick, Baltimore's 134th overall next month. And in exchange, the Ravens will get a fourth-round pick back. They're moving up, like you said, to 112. And a sixth-round pick, add that to the what's becoming uh, not just, well, mostly next year, all these compensatory picks are going to be become a, a slew of them for, for 2025. But at least you add to what you already have in terms of draft capital going into next month. And like you said, EDC is on an all-out heater. And this whole rebuild, 
Remember during one of the press conferences this offseason, John Harbaugh made it clear. He referred to this offseason as a rebuild at offensive line. I think that was at the com- at the combine or maybe at one of the end of the season press yeah. conferences. He referred to it as a rebuild. You're starting to see why. You're starting to see why. And so I'm seeing questions already about like how much the Ravens have now. It's hard to know for sure, but we do know between Morgan Moses and Tyus Bowers, they were both 5.5 million. So the Ravens just freed up 11 million, but we still don't know how much he got from, we still don't know how much he got from the pay cut to Ronnie Stanley. I don't know, maybe, maybe 3 million. I don't know. Three, four, two to four. I, I don't know. Somewhere in that range. So they're going to be cap compliant. And then, you know, if he needs to make any other moves, he does have restructures, plenty of places to do restructures in his pocket. Unbelievable. We have really timed this nicely the last couple of days. Oh haven't my we? gosh. News <laughs> keeps breaking. Uh, noon, noon time just feels like a good time. Oh, goodness gracious. Does it ever. Okay. Where were we? I was okay, talking well, about. Yeah. You were talking about as I was re- rebooting my computer and I still don't have everything back up, but whatever. Um, what were you talking about ulterior motives? I was just wondering, and which is why I was kind of like, I just love where your mind goes sometimes. Let's hear this. I was just wondering, you saw my tweet to Joe person who covers the yeah. Carolina Panthers. I was really curious. Did PQ have other ballpark offers that were similar to what he ended up signing for in Pittsburgh? And if he did, why Pittsburgh? Well, why the Steelers? I know there's a lot of decisions and a lot of factors that can go into these life decisions, but man, like, is there any animosity? Is there any spite within PQ? I know that he handled, and I'm not questioning him whatsoever from an integrity standpoint, character. He did everything and more of what was asked of him after some of the bumps in the road this time last year, whether that was drafting his potential replacement in Trenton Simpson not exercising the fifth-year option. EDC did not for PQ. They didn't extend an offer to him this offseason, or at least that wasn't a reported offer. Prior to that, we know they brought in Roquan. They extended Roquan. They paid him big-time record-setting money at the position. And PQ had a tough time with that, whether it was tweets, whether it was um, criticizing, whatever it was. And uh, he scrubbed his social media, we know, a year ago, which led to which didn't lead to anything. It led to his best season as a pro. And ultimately he got hopefully what he felt like he was deserving of. I just wonder, did he undervalue himself by going to Pittsburgh? Were there better offers out there? And if so, why the Steelers? (laughs) Oh man, I can't. can't. Not a theory, not a theory, just a question. (laughs) Just a question. Listen, I don't know. I don't know. I I would like to know what his other offers were, but even if it was in the ballpark, like I would way prefer as much as I hate the Steelers, right? Hate like we all hate them. They're the biggest rivals. It's heated. It's like no love lost, not nothing. Right. If I'm in PQ's position, even if it's in the ballpark, I'd way prefer for my own career to go to a place that's more stable than what Carolina has shown. No doubt. We know that Carolina was interested based off of that tweet. No doubt. I don't know who else. And multiple other teams too, based on reports. Maybe there was Seattle, maybe who knows, but he got a lower deal than I was anticipating. Right. So who knows what the market, but the point is like, who knows what the market was? Maybe this was like his, his best thing, but I feel like you're implying here you're saying you don't have any like conspiracy theories but you are implying that he like made that he potentially made this move out of spite i'm opening up for conversation based on what oh, we knew about on. his you personality start a conversation oh you're based, not opening on, it up you're like you're you're to me it's 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 starting here right based and on so, his personality to me the way i like to look at it is it's like it's business and like I think at the end of the day, the vast majority of players, their two highest priorities is to get paid and to win. And then anything else is kind of like minor and it's kind of 1%. So he didn't owe anything at the, the Ravens passed on him. 
the Ravens passed on him. They traded for Roquan. They paid Roquan the $20 million. He's got now $13 million. They drafted his potential replacement. They, they didn't extend the fifth-year option, and they didn't. there's no reported offers from the Ravens to him. So at that point, just go and get the best deal at a team that you think you could potentially win with. Now, now is is are the Steelers for sure like the best team in the league? Obviously not. We don't know what Russell Wilson's going to be, and that's going to be the biggest factor. But like, just let the dude go get the best deal he can get without all these conspiracy theories. In my view, like, what's well, the point? What, what's I, the I don't point? disagree with that, but you just said you just said that that like you're suggesting maybe maybe. Or uh, I'm sorry, you were expecting the market to to view him more valuable than what he ended up getting, right? So was did he potentially undervalue himself contractually? Why not wait to process? see? Why not wait to see if there was like some sort of huge big deal out there that he left it? Then you might have some credence. But now you're just throwing it out without any idea of what else he was offered. Well, that's why I'm trying to get down to the bottom of it with Joe. So hopefully he'll respond. <laughs> But you like now put it all out there without knowing. So but, I, I don't know. I'm I just not, don't, I'm not... To me, it's like it's it's edging on like this character. Like like you're saying like and the, and the reason why you have to like open it up saying, oh, I'm not attacking his character. I'm not attacking his integrity. But like you by just saying that you already are in my view. Well, we'll agree to disagree. I think it's a productive conversation to have. <laughs> why? What 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 do we produce out of it? What do we? What's what's being this produced? Is, this is a guy who turned into a an All Pro player for them, who was a drafted player at at the most important position that in the history. They passed on of, several times and made have, have had years in the making of passing on him. Right, right. Which which he's it's his right to go do what he did. I just think there's a lot more to be said based on some of the like he took a lot of things personal over the last couple of years. And I just wonder. He also if- took. He also said he took what Mike Tomlin said about him personal, which we haven't played that yet. Like he said, he no. took it personal that Mike that Tomlin was, said. Mike Tomlin said, "You're not a Raven. You're not a Raven. You're not a Raven." And at the end of the day, yeah, you like you remember those things, but they don't. In my view, they don't have like a tangible impact on what you make in terms of business decisions. Oh, I totally like. And so until I there's totally some sort of report that. that he was offered like 16 million somewhere else, then they, like there's no reason to have, in my view. The Tomlin we'll stuff, that, that was just fun. That was fun entertainment stuff. Like that had no impact on his decision. I agree with you there. Right. But for, to, sure. for some fans, they had thought because Tomlin had said that they're like, there's no way he'll sign with them. And I'm like, no, no, no. You guys oh. don't understand what matters. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. That comment from Mike Tomlin at the end of the day doesn't have an impact on his business decision. What has an impact on his business decision are always the two highest priorities. Who is going to give you the best deal and who's going to give you the best chance to win? And if it was like Carolina and the Steelers in the same ballpark, why wouldn't he pick the Steelers where there's like a better organization? So anyway. We'll see. We'll, right. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Should we should we remind people? Nah, it's whatever. I, I pulled that that About uh, what? Tomlin video. Just like I just thought it was hilarious that here, we'll play it real quick. Uh, when I was on my on their sala in my rookie year, Mike Tomlin was looking at me yelling at me you're not a raven you're not a raven you're not supposed to be there you're not you're not one of them so uh, every time i play them it's something personal that obviously stuck with you yeah definitely did <laughs> definitely did i don't care if he was joking i don't care if he was serious at the end of the day i'm on your sideline you're telling me i'm not a raven it's kind of disrespectful so <laughs> All right. So there we go. He even said it was personal, but yet he still signed up to play with them because what at the end of the day, what matters is money and winning. I think he he's a guy who takes everything to to heart. Like he he felt that. He wanted to be the next greatest Raven. And when they brought in Roquan, I, I think that fueled him for all the right reasons mm-hmm. and into what he became. But I really do. I really do wonder if deep down, like it still hurts that he's sure. now elsewhere. You know, and sure. um, I'm sure he'd prefer to have the 20 million that Roquan has, and I'm sure he'd still prefer to have that second deal and be with the Ravens. Sure, of course that hurts. And it's it's not personal; it's business. I'm sure he's hammering that into his head. Uh, but at the same time, you you wonder, you just wonder how things went. So so hopefully there'll be more more to come on in terms of what other offers were out there so we can get some more context behind this. 
But uh, Trenton, next man up. All right. What? 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 You want like you want like I'm just ready to move on from PQ. Let's let's get to September. Like that's my my view. Like the Ravens passed. He signed somewhere else. Let's get to September and the Ravens Steelers rivalry. So. It's gonna be pure pure anyway. theater, pure <laughs> theater, and maybe the rivalry ends up getting renewed because, like you said, it's it's lost its lost its juice a little bit in recent bit. years. It's not, been Cincinnati, not terribly, but a little bit. Yeah, it's been Cincinnati and Baltimore. Trenton Simpson, perhaps the next man up. We all remember what he did against those Steelers in Week 18. Sure, it was a meaningless game for Baltimore in terms of standings and whatnot. They had already wrapped up the division and number one overall seed. But, man, PFF gave him a grade of 80.4, a sack. He was flying all around, just two receptions allowed for a yard, two tackles for loss, no gain. And, uh, yeah, sure looks like if that is a microcosm of what could be coming or, or if that's a sign – of what could be coming. The Ravens are going to be in good shape as they move forward without PQ. What do you say? Yeah. So something that caught my attention at the end of um, the Matabike press conference was when Eric DaCosta talked about, you know, he, he basically was letting us know that this was coming, that, you know, he was going to have to let go of PQ and, you know, other guys like Geno Stone and all the people that we've seen sign elsewhere are now trade Morgan Moses and he said, um, I wish I could keep them all, but I can't. And then he said, you know, it's our job to kind of replace them. And then finally he said, but we're also going to need some of the young guys, paraphrasing, to step up, right? And so that might be some of the guards on the offensive line. We don't know. Yeah. And that, for, for me, was one of the first people I thought of when he said that was Trenton Simpson. Like, yep. this is the way you got to do you, you can pick and choose your massive contracts, which they've done with Matabike, Lamar, um, uh, uh, Andrews, and now Henry in terms of he's, I think he's like top 10 running back money. Yep. So he's picked it, he's picked and choose. And so that's when you do that, you're going to have to rely on young talent to step up. And, and, uh, Trenton's going to – I have a hard time believing that they're going to go out and, like, sign Khalil Mack, right? <laughs> like, I just don't think that's going to happen. If they're going to let PQ go, why not have just paid him? So, Trenton Simpson is uh, has a huge, huge opportunity ahead of him, and I like his speed. I like his speed. He has the speed that uh, – I don't know if it's as much as PQ, but but he's a speed guy that will – that theoretically on paper should team up well with Roquan. I like his dog. I like his inner yeah. dog, and I like that he had to sit for a year. Right. Think about that. You had to sit get for a year yeah. in the same position room as a guy named Zach Orr, who was leading the room, Patrick Queen, who was a running mate, and Roquan Smith, who was a running mate. The amount that he was able to probably soak up this year, I think that should be talked talked about more. Like I, I would I would suspect there's gonna be a learning curve once he becomes an everyday starter. But man, I mean you talk about having the, the mentorship that he had a year ago, I would I would have to think that that's going to pay dividends for him this upcoming season and beyond. So I think we're going to kind of shift gears here to talk a little bit about some of the national reaction that's come in since we finished up yesterday's live stream mm -hmm. related to the Derrick Henry signing. But before we do, just to kind of reset things for those of you who just hopped on, there has been a trade. The Ravens are trading Morgan Moses in what's going to become a pick swap. This just came out within the last 25 minutes or so. Their right tackle is going back to reunite with the New York Jets. Uh, the, the Jets will receive Moses in a fourth-round pick. Baltimore's 134th overall next month, and the Ravens in exchange receive another fourth-round pick. They're moving up several spots to 112 overall. That's in the fourth-rounder. And a sixth-round pick at 218 overall. So all of a sudden... Two former Ravens are going to be protected for Aaron Rodgers on his line in John Simpson and in uh, Morgan, Moses. Morgan Moses. So that's where we are right here. But um, let's kind of get into what happened yesterday. And I think Rich Eisen will start us off well. You, you grabbed this and found it off of YouTube. NFL Network, Rich Eisen, had this to say about the Ravens bringing in King Henry. 100% on brand for the Baltimore Ravens to bring Derrick Henry to Balmer and roll him downhill. What an absolute genius maneuver by Eric DaCosta. Derrick Henry coming to Baltimore and taking any sort of pressure. 
what pick your poison. Who do you want running at you? Him or Lamar? Well, I mean, Lamar because he's smaller. Yeah. I, <laughs> Lamar will just make you poison. look dumb, and Derrick Henry might put you in the hospital. Derrick so. Henry. <laughs> So Lamar That's is going to make you look dumb. Yeah. And Derek will put you in a hospital. So what would you rather have? <laughs> yeah. No, I I would rather look dumb. I don't want to yeah, be in the too. hospital. That's for sure. <laughs> me too. But what's funny is that is that um, what people are nationally forgetting about, which I don't blame them, but what national people are forgetting about is that they're still Keaton Mitchell probably going to come back in, uh, who knows, like October maybe. Yeah. Uh, that's just something I'm making off the top of my head. Nobody, nobody from the Ravens has, has projected that. Um, and I haven't even done the math. I mean, it could be October, November. We'll see. It all depends on like how clean of a, a tear it was. To it's certainly ACL. not going to be week one. It's not, it's probably not going to be week one, but, um, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, you also kind of think of like thunder and lightning. I saw Mina Kimes from ESPN tweet. Like there's no, like th the most lightning, lightning mist. <laughs> yeah. And the most thunderiest two players are like together. It's not just like, oh yeah, it's thunder and lightning. Like they uh, epitomize thunder and lightning. So putting them together is is just it's, it should be magic. It's got to be magic. Please be magic. As we discussed yesterday, the variety that they have in the skill player department is is just special. It's going to be overwhelming. You know, it's 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 gonna be like pick your poison epitomized. And I thought Chris Sims did a good job of of kind of summarizing the move. Derrick Henry, the Ravens, who continues to collect the biggest badasses around. He might be the most Raven-like running back ever. Still strong between the tackles, still can break a long run. With Lamar in their read option, he'll have space to gain speed and maximize his power. Look out with a train emoji. I mean. That's that's like some good perspective in terms of what this dude's about. Warren Sharp, as always, dug into the numbers. If defenses choose to load the box on Derrick Henry in Baltimore, as they did at the number one highest rate in Tennessee, Lamar Jackson versus seven plus man boxes last year with 158 attempts. Here's where he ranked in the following categories. EPA over drop back plus 0.27. That was number one in that category. He was number one in success rate, um, number three in completion rate, and number four in YPA. So, as Warren says, so as much as up. like, yeah, as much as like we talk about for Derrick Henry, because the focus has been on like he's 30, will he drop off? Uh, still was number two in the league last year, by the way. In in rushing yards, who's in writing an, this guy off? In an offense, well, anybody that's just like it's not, it it's fair because statistically, historically, yes, yeah, statistically, historically, running box dro drop off at 30, 30 years old, and it's why he didn't get Saquon or Josh Jacobs money. So it's fair to talk about, right? No that, doubt. And 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 oftentimes the cliffs come out of nowhere. The drop-off yeah. clips come off of nowhere. That yeah. being said, you were number two last year. And oh, by the way, in week 18, you hit 21 miles per hour, 21 plus per hour, which was like your second highest speed of like your career, yeah. you know? Right. Right. And so, so yet, yeah, and so no, the, 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 the drop-off doesn't look like it's coming, but those that wonder, because it always happens out of nowhere, which is what a cliff is. It's not like this steady decline, right? Yeah. So, but, so my point is getting back to my point was that everybody's talking about what Lamar will do for Derrick Henry, which is true. It, like for him to rush for 1200 yards last year, when he, all defenses knew, they knew we stopped Derrick Henry, we stopped their offense. They yeah. knew that that yeah. was the game plan for defenses and you still ran for 1200. So yes, Lamar next to him is going to open him up for sure assuming EDC gets this offensive line together, right? Yeah. But but at the same time, what Warren Sharp is hitting into is what Derrick Henry is going to do for Lamar and not just against, not just Lamar being able to run, but in all these places that he's talking about. In in the in the EPI a per drop back, oh, number one. In success rate, in completion rate, when they start, you know what I mean? In yards per, per attempt. I mean, those are some nice numbers. So, so, one of our, I can't remember who, somebody um, 
had commented yesterday that we highlighted that Derrick Henry is going to extend Lamar's career. And that's true, like, again, from, from a running standpoint, but also it should help open things up for Lamar and the passing game. Truth bearer, longevity. Okay. Truth bearer was, uh, was all over that. And I thought it was a good point. Like, don't you think Lamar's life's just going to become easier? Like his, his football life <laughs> in game life. Like, like it, again, I, yes, but it, I don't want to get ahead of myself until I know this offensive line. I need to know that because we now know Ronnie Stanley's back yeah. for 2024. Yeah. We cannot have a repeat of what we saw in that AFC championship game where he lets, you know, a rusher through and gets Lamar's blind side and causes a fumble. So right. absolutely. Derrick Henry is going to help 1000%, but we all know the game is one of the trenches. So Ronnie Stanley's got to get healthy. He's got to get closer to his 2019 form. I don't know that he's ever going to totally regain that, but closer to it. And then we got the right tackle position and we got two left guards. I mean, it's a legit rebuild. When you're rebuilding three out of the five positions, we got to wait to see what's going to happen there because it's a big, big, big missing piece. Potentially some, some early learning curves, maybe. We'll have to see how, they, how Joe D'Alessandris cultivates it. But back into the numbers we go here, uh, Ian Hartlett's put uh, different categories here of under uh, yards. At, sorry, I think I got his name wrong. Har Is it Hartitz? Yeah, Ian Hartitz. Yeah. Um, anyway, yards after contact per carry, three different categories he took a look at here. First, he looked at Derrick Henry specifically, who over the last four years has ranked second, ninth, fourth, and eighth league-wide, respectively. The Titans in those categories, yards before contact per carry in the last four years have ranked 13th, 18th, and 30th and 30th, respectively, last four years. The Ravens' yards before contact <laughs> per carry over the last four years, yeah, you don't even need to, like, <laughs> go year by year. It's just the last four years they've been first Yeah, every single season. So, needless to say, what a it's a nice pairing. What a marriage. That's a nice pairing. <laughs> yeah. So you're getting you're getting top of the league yards after contact. And oh, by the way, you're joining an offense where where the yards before before contact is number one. So that's a nice pair. And what's hilarious, Bobby? Like like one of the things that always struck me by working in the building is when I would personally stand next to players, like if I saw them in the cafeteria or outside the locker room or whatever. And I was always like with like cornerbacks, especially nickel cornerbacks or safeties. I'm like, dang, I'm taller than you. <laughs> you know, you're just like, I can't believe that you're like this pro and you're out there hitting and like, I'm taller than you. Now you're built like a truck <laughs> and you're all muscle, but I'm taller than you. One thing, and I was listening to Garrett Downing talk about this, how he was like when he saw when he stood up next to Derrick Henry and um at the Pro Bowl. And you know, you know, in your mind, running backs are shorter. And that was another running backs. I was always taller than them, like JK Dobbins, taller than like you're just taller than these guys. And then you get to Derrick Henry, and it's like that guy looks like he should be a pass rusher. Outlier. He's like a pass, he's an outlier, which is why the Ravens are betting on him past post 30 years old, right? Like he yep. just keeps breaking the mold of everything we know. Yep. This guy is built like a pass rusher. looks like he could go out there and go be with Clowney and Odafe Owe and these guys and like do those drills, but he's got the speed and the endurance to go a hundred yards and just run over people. It's it, he's a special, he's a special, special guy. And that's why you bet on him. He is abnormal. Think about when we were in Vegas. You were towering over Mark Ingram. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's Mark. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Keaton Mitchell's similar size to him. Like, some of these speedy wide receivers aren't all that different in the height departments compared to running backs. Yeah. You know, I, I remember meeting Zay Flowers at one of his events last fall. We're the same height. Like, wow. It's, it's, it's amazing that these guys come in different shapes and sizes. And by the way, when we, like, when I did give, Mark Ingram a hug. And that was that's um that's kind of like the the norm, right? They like give you the bro hugs and kind of bring you in or whatever, and then they give me a traditional hug. And so we we hugged, you know, plenty of guys down there. Mark Ingram, man, that dude, I was like, you do not have like a half a percent of fat on your body. Like that, I mean, and he's retired. And he's retired. 
Like our Henry's going to, is just like another level. Another totally. level. Totally. Totally. He's a good hugger too, isn't he? Who Ingram? Yeah. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Like you also expect really tough he's dudes just, to like, be like, as you hug, you're like, don't, don't tackle me. But no, he was, he was smooth. Yeah. He's just like a warm. He's yeah, there's a warmth to him. He's such just a, like, he, and of light and a joy. Yes. Yeah. Mark Ingram. So. I miss that guy. What's going on with this? You could suit up a, almost <laughs> an entire baseball team with the amount of, former Titans that became Ravens over the years and Derek and being the latest. And it was funny is it's not even just former Titans, right? It's former Titan legends that come to Baltimore. Totally. It's not just like, cause like how many players have gone out? We were making a joke. I feel like a year ago. Was it, we were making the joke that it was like either the New York, the New York Ravens, right? Or, or, um, Oh, yeah, because the Jets. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the yeah. Jets because yeah. because they just kept taking with Joe Douglas up there. They just kept taking former Ravens. But it was like, oh well, well it's not like <laughs> they do. But it's like Morgan Moses, right? Who isn't who's who was a solid player for the Ravens, but not necessarily a legend, right? It's not like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. Lamar Jackson going up there the way Steve McNair right. came to the Ravens, or or it's Zay Flowers maybe going up there after a second contract, the way Derek Mason came here or Samari roll like Marlon Humphrey, then going up there yeah. it's or Jamal Lewis going up there and we're getting Derek Henry. Like these are legends and the Ravens just make a living sometimes off of getting one last squeeze of the juice, right. Of guys who have just had incredibly productive careers. Of course, Gowie hops on this to get the Tennessee faithful all riled up, right? <laughs> he <laughs> yeah. loves doing that on social. Uh, Jonathan Williams is pointing out CJ Mosley. That's uh, CJ Mosley was a first round pick. I don't know that I'd call him a legend, but that is one of them. Yeah. Had a chance to catch up with him. We did in, uh, in Vegas. It was good to see him. He gave us a lot of time. It was cool to catch up, but uh, some quick hits before we get out of here. And by the way, uh, Jonah Schaefer just tweeted some over the cap projections, like almost like instant reaction projections to the trade that just was made for, for Morgan Moses. Um, assuming an equal return in this Ravens Jets trade, Morgan Moses was equivalent equivalent to a late fifth round pick. So EDC kind of just continuing to mix and match, and um, and a fifth round pick is what EDC traded for Marcus Peters back in the day, right? Mark so, Marcus, Pe yeah, Marcus yeah. Peters, yeah, Marcus yeah. Peters. So like some of these moves, you just can't underestimate you know yeah so as of right now before we get to quick hits just quickly here uh, the updated draft picks are as follows they got the 30th overall in the first round 62nd overall in the second 93rd in the third uh the fourth they have two they now have uh 113 and 130 they have a, a fifth rounder 165 overall a sixth rounder 218 Again, that was just picked up from the Jets as well, along with that that fourth rounder. A seventh rounder at 228 uh, from the Jets for Chuck Clark a year ago. And 250 overall in the seventh. So right now they've got they've got nine total picks to play with going into two in the, draft. the fourth, two in the fourth, and two in the sixth. Two in the fourth and two in the seventh. Two. Oh, oh, that's right, because they didn't have a six round pick before. Right. So Hey, another moved yep. up in the fourth, moved up in the fourth and got a six, which you didn't have before. Yep. So oh, a pick, a pick in every single round and multiple in the fourth and seventh. There you go, EDC. So there you have it. And like we said, <laughs> next year, expect double digits probably the way they're going right now, just based on the compensatory selection projection that that brian mcfarland and others i know nick cordy's all over this as well on social media yeah but anyway the ravens at the time of this tweet have lost six qualifying unrestricted free agents projected fourth round compensatory pick will come in place of patrick queen losing john simpson gino stone ronald darby and Devin duvernay qualifies as a sixth and these are all picks for each of them for each yes. of them yes yeah. um well, wait, to total? No, for each of them. They both, they all, so Simpson qualifies as a six. Stone qualifies as a what? six. What? Yes. They're going to get a six, they're going to get a six for each? If, 
if there's no more cancellations. Okay. Yeah. So right now. So, okay. So the way it works, comp picks are decided by mostly, I don't know the full formula, but mostly it's the contract that they get, but then it's also playing time and starting time. Mm-hmm. So that's why these are projections. We got to wait to see how much everybody plays, but obviously you're expecting Simpson to, to play all 17 games, barring an injury. Same with stone Darby. I don't know his situation. Was he signed as a starter? Mm, to Jacksonville? Probably not. Duvernay, probably their starting returner. What if he were to go to the pro bowl again? Something like that. Okay. Okay. So all of them are lined up well for that six space off their contract and their playing time. So that's why he's saying the Ravens have lost six qualifying UFAs. It's not those four for one because then otherwise there would only be three qualifying. Okay. okay. I got you. So then though, what cancels that out, that's why we can't count on, on all of it yet is if you sign somebody that goes against one of your losses. So Derek Henry, because he got an $8 million deal more than Gus Edwards, right? He qualifies in the, in the sixth round pick, same as Simpson stone, Darby and Duvernay. So he cancels out one of them. Okay. Now, because he cancels them out, doesn't matter. Cause the max comp picks you can get is four. So the Ravens have room to play because they had six qualifying. They've knocked out once and now they have five qualifying. They could still sign somebody else. It's not a comp pick <laughs> and still get the total of four. But what you want to do is make sure you don't sign somebody that can knock out queen. Right. Right. You want that one. That's a, the most you company. want the fourth rounder. If you're going to do it, you want to be some, you want to either knock off Edwards cause he's a seventh or another one of those six. Gotcha. Yeah. Boy, this is like learning a new language, compensatory formulas. Oh, man. You, uh, listen, I had this to know. This was your life. <laughs> that's the way the Ravens do their business, right? And I've been covering yeah. them for over a decade, so I better know. This was your life. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for that lesson. And we'll finish with this, what you pulled in on Marcus Williams from Albert Breer. Yeah, so I just thought this was interesting. Um, I don't know if we can make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Here we go. So Albert Breer just looks back on the 2022 free agency tracker, and he noticed a trend that trend that seven of the 11 guys that he has listed below, uh, these were some of the higher deals, the top the top 11 deals. He said two years later, seven of the 11 guys are no longer with their teams, the teams that signed them. Two of the four that are still with their teams just took big pay cuts. Then he goes on and explains safety. Marcus Williams is now the only player left on this list of all 11 who hasn't either taken a pay cut, been traded or just cut from the team. So he says, again, it's been two years and shows what free agency is a chance to use short term fixes to plug holes, which is why even though with Derrick Henry, it was more money than I wanted to spend, right? I was asking for that $6 million range that being said, it's not like the Ravens spent so much more that I'm like super sick to my stomach, right? Because at the end of the day, with the way that it was structured, they can make it a one-year deal if they want. But if he plays well, then you got him for two. Either way, it's short term and you're not on the hook long term. Right. And so whereas like the the Marcus Williams one, that was a longer term, longer term. It was three years, uh, but plenty of money. So to, to Albert's point, He's he's one of the few that hasn't taken either a pay cut, trade, or cut, and he hasn't been healthy the whole time. So I'd and now that Geno Stone's gone, I feel like the pressure is on him, and he's played well when he's been in there. And and to his credit, he gutted through that pec injury. Oof, uh, but I know he's capable of even more when he's fully healthy because he's he's kind of the guy that was supposed to be the interceptions kind of part of the defense that ended up being Geno Stone. So heading into this year, the Ravens will certainly be relying on him, especially after Stone is gone. Uh, but, but there's some pressure there to, to produce for sure. Especially since this is, if that was a three-year deal deal, this is a contract year for him. Wouldn't know it when we caught up with him. He was all business and he was all business, all business. So shout out to a couple of our returning patrons, Ivan Gunn, Layla C. Appreciate you both for all the support and thanks for helping us out through Patreon this month. You guys signed up for your four ninety nine membership monthly shout out tier, and we wanted to thank you guys both. So, if you're interested in doing the same out there and helping us out, supporting us this off season, and also getting something in return, you can go visit patreon.com forward slash Ravens Vault Podcast to learn more about what we're offering here inside the channel this month. So, again, continuing to tinker and and have some fun with this new format during free agency. We will be live again 
uh, the rest of the week or at least tomorrow at noon. Then we'll kind of try and figure out what Friday looks like, make some decisions on the back end with that. And special thanks to Mantis Sleep for sponsoring this episode. Anything else from you? It was a jam-packed one. Jam-packed. And I love it. Just like every day we've come on at noon, we've had like breaking news in the middle of it. It's perfect. Perfect yeah. timing. No doubt. It looks like, let's see, Justin Tucker is no longer the highest paid kicker. It's going to be Philadelphia Eagles' Jake Elliott. Four years, $24 million. Six million average per year. Oh, okay, excuse me. Justin doesn't stand alone, I should say. Elliot now has six million on average per year, which ties him with Justin as the highest paid kicker in the NFL. So just wanted to be thorough there. We'll finish with that. JT9. Still the guy, though. He still sure the guy. Is. Appreciate you guys for dropping by, and we will catch up with you at noon tomorrow. That's Thursday, the 14th, if not before. Of course, the new league year begins at 4 p.m. Eastern, so be on the lookout. You never know. We might have to press live again, depending on if any, anything uh, is, is left up Eric DaCosta's sleeve. But sure seems like he's already done his, his big business today. But we will be on the lookout for, for as always. So thanks to all 4,000-plus 4, 4, of you who Ooh. joined uh, concurrently. We've had a great, great week with this, and, and, and we'd love feedback from you as well in terms of how you feel and, and what you – like and don't like about this new format that we're kind of experimenting with Baltimore Ravens vault at gmail.com is a great way to get in touch with us. And as always special thanks to you partner for, for the live stream uh, partnership. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for dropping by.